Hello there, Wallalo Warriors! In this video, we're going to be taking a look at when to get the economy upgrades in Age of Empires 2. Now, getting the economy upgrades is really, really, really important if you want to play a good game and make the most of your villagers. However, I do see a lot of players getting the economy upgrades at really bad times or forgetting their economy upgrades altogether. So in this video, we're going to show how important economy upgrades are and give you a general idea of when you should be getting each one. Now you have to bear in mind that every single game is different and there is no formula for exactly when you should get each economy upgrade in every single game because there are so many different variables when it comes to Age of Empires 2. So do keep these suggestions as just that and bear in mind that it might not always be applicable to the game that you are playing but generally speaking the advice in this video should be pretty sound for most situations and most maps. We will cover some water maps versus land maps as well, since they do play very differently. Okay, so before we go into the very first economy upgrade, I do want to give you guys a little bit of a tip so that you know how many villagers you have on each resource at any one time. Now you can do this by selecting the economy mode on the minimap, and this will bring up, if you have the scores enabled, the number of villagers you have on each resource at any given time. Now this is going to be really important because most of the guidelines I've given this video will be about having a certain number of villagers on each resource and that is the kind of guideline as to when you should get the economy upgrade for that resource. So use the economy mode on the minimap in order to be able to find this value out. Okay, so the very first upgrade that we're going to take a look at will be the double bitax upgrade which is available in the lumber camp from the feudal age onwards. The double bitax upgrade is probably one of the most important early game upgrades and that's because wood is by far the most important resource in the early stages of the game. Once all of your sheep, your boar and your deer are gone, you're going to pretty much rely on wood for everything. Without wood you can't get food because you need wood to build farms. Without wood you can't build any buildings to make military and you know it's just such an important resource at this stage of the game. And since Double Bitax gives a 20% increase in villager efficiency when chopping wood, this is probably going to be one of the very first upgrades in the economy that you'll get. Now, it's important to remember that Double Bitax costs 100 food. And for 100 food, you can also get 2 villagers. So you have to do a cost analysis here. What will be better for your economy? Will it be better to have two additional villagers at this point, or would it be better to have 20% faster wood gathering? Well, that really comes down to how many villagers you have on wood at that particular time. And in order to get two additional villagers value from the 20% faster wood gathering, you need to have 10 villagers on wood. Since 20% of 10 is 2, and that means that you'll be getting roughly the same value back. So when you have more than 10 villagers gathering wood, it becomes the most cost-effective time to get the double bitax upgrade. It's vitally important that you get the double bitax upgrade on any water map that you play where you're going to be doing a galley rush or some kind of water aggression. This is the reason why we see expert players researching the double bitax upgrade the second they reach the feudal age when they're doing a galley rush build. On land maps, it can be a little bit different though. Let's say you're going for a fast castle build order. Now in the fast castle build order, it's really difficult to get the 800 food and 200 gold you need to go to the castle age. And spending that 100 food doing the wood upgrade before you click to the castle age is not a very good idea. So perhaps postpone that upgrade in order to do the castle age upgrade first. I think it's really important to take into consideration your current situation when planning to get an economy upgrade. Think of an economy upgrade as an investment. You pay the resources now and you reap the rewards later down the line once your villagers become more efficient and they all work a little bit better. That's all well and good. But if you're being attacked and you're really struggling to defend your base, it's always going to be a better idea to invest your resources in military to defend yourself from the immediate threat than get the upgrades that are going to help you out later on. If you're, for instance, being attacked in the feudal age by some archers, then getting the double bitax upgrade might not be the best decision when you really need a little bit more food in order to make the military to defend from those archers. 
in this situation, instead of getting the double bit axe upgrade, you could afford the equivalent of a scout and a skirmisher, which is going to help you out a lot more from those raiding archers than having a little bit more wood later on. So always keep that in mind. If you're in immediate threat, then perhaps getting the economy upgrade is not the best idea, and just getting out some military instead would be better. As another general rule, if you have to decide between creating villagers or getting an economy upgrade, choose creating villagers every time. Let's say, for instance, you have exactly 100 food in the bank, then it's always going to be better to make two additional villagers than do an economy upgrade, because villagers are more versatile, and ultimately that's going to keep your economy ticking over much better in the long run. If you have 200 food, then by, me by all means do the two villagers and then do the double bit axe upgrade as well. So to give you guys a better idea of just how important wood is in the early stages of the game, the second most important early game upgrade would be the horse collar upgrade from the mill. Now, the horse collar upgrade increases the amount of food on your farms by 75, so most people assume this is a food economy upgrade. In actual fact, the horse collar upgrade is really actually a wood upgrade, a wood economy upgrade, because it reduces the amount of wood that you need to reseed a farm. Although the farms have more food on them, the villagers will still gather the food at the same rate, so the amount of food that you gather will not increase by having the horse collar upgrade. What will actually happen is that instead of needing one villager to sustain the production of three farms, you need one villager to sustain the production of four farms. So therefore you're saving about 60 wood every three farms that you create. This is really good because obviously it's going to allow you to have a little bit more wood and like we spoke about earlier on, uh, wood is incredibly important at the early stage of the game. In fact, some expert players such as Hassan, who is really notable for doing this, won't build a single farm until he has that horse collar upgrade. And he will send all of his villagers out to berries, he'll delay putting farms up for as long as possible until he reaches the feudal age, where he'll do horse collar immediately and then chuck down uh, the farms that he needs, just so he gets a little bit more value out of that upgrade. Getting horse collar early is usually a very good idea if you're doing a feudal age aggression. Depending on your strategy, it may even be a better idea to get horse collar before bit axe. If you're going for a scout rush in the feudal age where you're going to need a lot of farms to sustain scout production and villager production, then getting horse collar before bit axe would be the better choice. If you're going for archers, it's most likely going to be a better idea to get double bit axe before horse collar, but still, getting horse collar early when you're doing a feudal age regression will be a very good idea. If you're going for a fast castle and going into knights, getting that horse collar upgrade before you put down a bunch of farms is going to be a damn good idea as well, because all of that saved wood is going to be great for when it comes to building your second and third town centre. So getting the horse collar upgrade whilst you're on the way up to the castle age would be advisable, and like I said earlier on, when you're doing a fast castle, you generally don't want to get those eco upgrades until you're going up to the castle age, because you need that food those eco upgrades cost in in order to reach the castle age initially. Once you're going up to the castle age, then you can spend those resources on the eco upgrades and getting horse collar and bit axe at that point is going to be vitally important. Another note about horse collar at this point is that horse collar only affects farms that are built after the technology has been researched. So if you have a bunch of farms that are already placed down and then research horse collar, it's not going to affect the farms that already exist until they are reseeded or any new farms are produced. So, as a general rule of thumb, if you're going to place six or more farms, then getting horse collar first is a good idea. If you have five or six farms already placed down, then getting horse collar before you reseed them is going to be the best option. So moving on to the gold and stone mining upgrades, the first upgrades that are available in the mining camp. Now these upgrades are certainly not as important as the horse collar or the bit axe upgrades because they take a lot longer to pay for themselves. They only give a 15% increase in efficiency of villagers, and generally speaking, you're not going to have that many villagers taking gold or stone in the early stages of the game. 
For instance, if you're doing a double archery range archer build and you're doing you know, two archer production at a time, you need seven villagers on gold. Now, if you do the gold mining upgrade, that will give you the efficiency of eight villagers. So it simply makes more sense to add another villager at that point due to the fact that the upgrade itself costs 100 food. So you'd be much better still adding two more villagers and sending them over to gold if you need the extra gold at that point. For the gold mining upgrade, it's probably best to wait until you have 12 or more villagers taking gold in order to upgrade that. Of course, if you have got surplus food and you're not in desperate need to save the food, then getting that gold upgrade a little bit earlier so you can send villagers elsewhere in your economy might also work out. So you could get it as little as 10 villagers. For the stone mining upgrades, it does work a little bit different, however. It's unusual that you're going to have more than 10 villagers on stone at any time, unless you're really desperate to get a castle. So really, when you're looking to get the stone mining upgrades, you're generally better off doing them when you're really wanting to get a lot of stone quickly, and you have surplus food available. I think that the stone mining upgrades are probably the least valuable economy upgrades in the game, actually. And, uh, you know, you rarely see top players getting the stone shaft mining upgrade, which is the second stone upgrade. The first stone upgrade you generally see in the late Castle Age and early Imperial Age. Before then, it's probably just not worth it for most situations. And as a general rule, I'd say don't bother with that stone upgrade until you are in the late Castle or in Imperial Age and you're really looking just for that quick um, stone boost. Now, wheelbarrow and hand cards, two of the biggest economy upgrades and probably two of the most disputed economy upgrades as well out there. The wheelbarrow upgrade is really difficult to say, you know, when you should get this. Now, I've got a video already with the Viper talking about, you know, um, when the wheelbarrow is ideal to, to research. The thing is, it's not just an economy upgrade. It also improves the speed of your villagers as well. And that can also be very, very important. The wheelbarrow upgrade and handcart upgrade are vital to every single game that you play. And I think, you know, the more and more you play, the more you'll realize when the best time to get those upgrades are. Um, I don't want to give you a number of villagers or a time in game when you should get this tech because it really does vary so wildly between games. It depends whether you're on a water map, on a land map, whether it's a closed map, whether you're booming, whether you're attacking uh, or rushing, you know, depends on so many different factors that I I can't give you a villager value on when this tech is the best for you to get. Um, what I would say though is just remember that the wheelbarrow upgrade is going to have the biggest impact on your farmers. Your gold miners and stone miners are going to see very little impact from wheelbarrow. Your wood gatherers will see a moderate impact, but it will be quite small. And then the farmers are going to be where the big impact is. So a good example here when you'd get wheelbarrow quite early is when you're doing an archer flush in the feudal age and you're making a lot of, uh, a lot of archers, a lot of army. You're sending a lot of villagers out to gold to sustain army production, getting wheelbarrow in there somewhere is going to be really good for you because those farms are going to work better while you're sending villagers out to wood and to gold in order to get the surplus resources you need to go to the castle age. If you're doing a kind of fast castle build order, once you've got three TCs up, I'd say get wheelbarrow at that point. Uh, generally speaking, once you do a fast castle, your, your goal is to get two new town centers up relatively quickly. As soon as you can afford wheelbarrow without letting those town centers go idle, that will be the best time to get it in that situation. And you should never, ever, ever let your town center go idle so that you can afford to get wheelbarrow or so that you can get wheelbarrow in one TC whilst your other two sit idle in the case of a three TC boom. So keep that in mind. And also bear in mind that handcart is much better than wheelbarrow. So getting that as soon as you can in most games is going to be the, the best thing for you to do. Moving on to the Castle Age eco upgrades and here we're talking about the bow saw upgrade at the lumber camp for the wood, the heavy plow upgrade at the mill to increase the food on your farms further still, the gold shaft mining and the, um, the stone shaft mining upgrades. Well we've already spoken about the gold and stone mining upgrades. Uh, the stone mining upgrade you probably won't want to be doing the second one. Um, until really late in the game or you know, not at all in some situations. The gold mining upgrade, 
I would say typically leave this one until the Imperial Age when you've got a good surplus of food. Um, throw down that gold mining upgrade. You're going to get a big increase across the board. And generally speaking, you're going to have enough villagers taking gold in the Imperial Age to justify that one. Now the really big ones, the bowsaw and the heavy plow upgrades in the castle age, these are going to be uh, really, really big ones. Now, if you're on a water map and you know you immediately reach the castle age, the first thing you want to do is get the bowsaw. Since you're making so many boats, you're going to have lots and lots of villagers on wood, and you're going to have more than enough villagers on wood at that point in the game to make this technology cost effective. This is also true if you're doing a kind of fast castle build order and you're trying to get those second and third town centers down. Getting this technology quite early in the castle age is the done thing. You'll see a lot of top players doing the bow saw upgrade as soon as they reach the castle age and it becomes available. It is a very, very useful technology and you know why, because of how important wood is. The last technology that we'll talk about in this video is the heavy plow upgrade, which is available from the mill in the castle age as well. Generally speaking, this technology is not as great as the uh, horse collar tech, but it would be advisable to get this if you are planning to throw down a bunch of farms. For instance, once you're in the castle age and you've added your second and third TC, you're going to be seeding up 12 or more farms. Getting that heavy plow upgrade is going to be worth it at that point. It's also going to be worth it once you have 20 or more farms already placed. So either right before you're about to place down 12 or more farms, or once you have 20 farms existing, get that tech. I'm not going to talk about crop rotation or the two-man saw upgrades in this video because they are really late game upgrades and basically when you can afford them in the Imperial Age, they're going to be a good idea. Obviously, when you're in, in the Imperial Age, there's a lot more fighting going on, there's going to be bigger battles going on, so you're going to be investing a lot more in military, and those Castle Age economy upgrades can keep you going for quite a while, and once you get maybe a little bit of a break in the aggression in the military production, and those technologies become affordable, that would be the opportune time to research them. I've made a handy printout so that you can have something in front of you while you play to remind you of when the ideal time to get these technologies will be. And maybe, you know, you could print this off and use it whilst you play. Or you could even have it up on your second monitor if you have one and use it as a quick reference whilst you're playing the game. So that about wraps things up, and thank you very much guys for watching. I really hope this has been useful to you. If you do have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below, and I'll read and answer every single one that I can. And yeah, thanks very much for watching. I've been Zach. As always, guys, I will see you next time.